I've been visiting Dubai since 2015 and people still have the same habit. They are still purchasing bottled water. Where I come from, we drink tap water. Well, I go for filtered, but you get the point. Call it luck or destiny, I accidentally found a content creator summit in Dubai, so I decided to go. But there was a teeny tiny problem. Tickets were sold out. Don't ask how, I managed to get in. And I collected some victims to ask them about their opinion of the tap water in Dubai. So let's go check them out. Do you drink tap water in Dubai? I do not drink tap water in Dubai. Yes, but I'm growing more and more skeptical of it, to be honest. I haven't done so far. Do you like the taste of the water here? I actually love the tap water here. As soon as I landed here, people were like, make sure not to drink tap water and to use a filter for your shower head just to protect your skin and hair. So to get to the bottom of this, first we need to understand what are Dubai's water sources. Remember this video of Mr. Beast who planted about 100 wells in Africa? Well, that's groundwater. So that's the number one source of water in Dubai. Second one is desalination. So what is groundwater? I'm gonna get a little technical here. Groundwater is basically when water soaks into the ground and it goes into a place where it's called an aquifer. Aquifer is basically like a tank with rocks and soils and it just becomes a little tank for the water and it gets stored in. The water stays there until it's pumped back up for human consumption. And this is an important resource because people use it for farming, agriculture, human consumption, drinking and so on. But the situation in Dubai is a little different due to its geological location that's near the sea and high temperatures. That causes mainly three problems to occur. The way it works is that you need precipitation, that's rain, snow, or hail to fall. And then once the water is there, then the water gets soaked in. But due to the climate in Dubai, there's less recharge rates. That is, less rain, less recharge. But it's not like it never rains. Sometimes it rains, and whenever it does, due to the high temperatures, most of it evaporates before it even sits to the ground. Finally, let's say that some water actually does go all the way down to the reservoirs. Due to its location so close to the sea, that seawater gets mixed with that water, which makes it very salty. So it's not usable for drinking or sometimes even agriculture. But these resources are scarce. It is projected that day zero for fresh underground water could arrive within the next 15 to 20 years. That is not good news. Dun, dun, dun. So now what? Whatever I said, at the end of the day, I said, you still can't drink that water. Local authorities have to provide some sort of water, right? So what is the tap water that we're drinking? That brings me to point number two. The other source of water is desalinated water. What does this fancy word mean? This is where I'll start using some fancy schmancy words. So let's break it down. I met an industry expert who has been working in the field for over 10 years. So let's see what he has to say. So we're at World Energy Future Summit. Please introduce yourself, tell us your name and where you're from and what you do. I'm Hakim El Fadim. I'm from Morocco. My background is water treatments. Let's understand what is desalination, what it takes to desalinate water, and what kind of water can you desalinate? It's two types of water we can desalinate. It's like brackish water and then sea water. Brackish water is kind of water that you can find on the surface, which has salinity more than two, three, four gram per liter. So you cannot drink that water, you cannot use it in irrigation, so you need to reduce the salinity in water in order to use it for irrigation or drinking. The sea water, it's a sea where you have concentrations very high, more than 30 grams per liter of salt. And then the goal is to use a filter called reverse osmosis membrane to remove the salt from the seawater. The way how reverse osmosis works is simply, so you, have, you get water and you separate it in two quantities. If you have, for example, one liter, you would have half liter double concentration of salt and half liter, very, very less amount of salt in mm. water, which is very pure. Pure water, yes. That's exactly the nature. So you, you concentrate the water in one side and you get pure water on the other side. And how do you do the concentration? I just want to understand the technology behind it. In a simple way, it's a plastic made uh, filter mm -hmm. where you apply very high pressure okay. in order to permeate water without salt. Mm -hmm. So it's a membrane that is semi-permeable. It's a plastic that reject everything except water can go through it. It's like it has the smallest types of holes that only pure water can go through these holes. Scientists will be angry with you if you see <laughs> holes, but we can't consider them. Okay, okay. It's okay. Kind, of, kind of holes that they love, I would say hydrophilic, they love yeah. water to go through. Yeah. And when they saw they can, they say, no, no, you are not mm -hmm. going to go. Mm -hmm. Whatever the kind of salt that they come close to this plastic membrane, yes. they are rejected. Yes. And only water is really 
has more chance to go through it. So you mentioned your startup is helping these membranes to reduce the cost. Exactly. So okay. the operators, you have a bunch of engineers and operators, they come every day to desalination plants okay. and they run desalination plants and they need to run it 24 seven because okay. they need to deliver water for drinking. And time to time they have problems, they need to fix them. So our job is to guide those operators and engineers who go every day in desalination plant to give them actionable guidance, what they need to do in order to reduce the operation costs. In easy words, they have problems. We do the diagnostic of those problems and then we tell them how to fix this problem. What would happen with the water that is not getting through? So we have the pure water that's on one side and then the rest of the water is going to brine. It's, it's uh, not useful water. What are we doing with that water? Some desalination plant, they just give it back to the sea and some of them, they put it like in, in, in a big deponi space where they wait for the sun to evaporate the water and they get the salt. I guess that would be a little smarter way to go exactly. out. And there is another third way which is very rare. Some desalination plant they try to mine the salt, the brine, mm -hmm. to extract magnesium, to oh. extract other metals which is expensive to sell. That's better. I mean this contributes to the ecosystem of overall because yeah. if you're just throwing it back to the sea and then you're taking back that water of the sea and desalinating it, yeah. then it's like doing the job over and over again. But if you're being able to recycle that water and use the the good things that you can sell and the rest of the water can get evaporated and just be somewhere else, I guess that's a better way to go at it, right? Yeah, that's a good way. Thank you very much for your time. Well, it was a come. pleasure. Other than this very informative interview, I found some time to go around and find local water treatment companies to speak with. One of them was called Ultratech Water Treatment. They welcomed me nicely and helped me with some findings in this video, drawing from their 15 years of experience. When I visited them, I also had the opportunity to physically see a transportable desalination plant that they built themselves. This was so interesting to see in real life. It was inside a literal cargo and could be shipped anywhere in the world. When this is finalized and connected, it should be literally able to turn seawater into drinking water. Obviously, this is a much smaller version water municipalities use for their operations. But I also have high hopes that one day I'll also get to see a full-on operational desalination plant for an entire country. So now that we know what desalinated water is, let's see actually if it's pure water. If you follow me, you know that I like doing some DIY tests at home. So let's go see if it actually is pure. Obviously, I'm not a lab expert, and these are just DIY tests. There are much more professional ways to go at this, but for now, this will do the job. It's important to note that the results won't be exactly the same across Dubai. I'm testing in the area of Jumeirah 3. So I have a few testers and we'll start with the pH test of the water. We would prefer to have a pH that's higher than 7 aka alkaline water. Here we see that it's at 8.4 which is a good indicator. Next we move on to the TDS test. This will test the total dissolved solids, that is minerals, salts, metals and more. A generally acceptable TDS is lower than 500 ppm according to WHO. Here, my tester is testing in millisiemens, and to get it to ppm, we need to multiply it by 500. So we'd get an end result of 322 ppm. But since TDS tests are a combination of many things, I wanted to know what is the primarily dissolved solid. For instance, in Armenia, the primary issue is hardness. And you guessed it, that's what's next. Hardness is basically the mineral content in the water. That's primarily calcium and magnesium. We got a result of 4 German degrees, which translates to 71 ppm, which isn't considered hard. So what is making this TDS so high? After some research, I found out that the sodium concentration is what is causing the TDS to be so high. Obviously, there are many more things found in the water other than what we tested so far. So, I ordered this other tester that has many more components to have a broader view. But these test strips are never accurate, so I don't know, I'm not really relying on it. I was actually very suspicious about chlorine rates in Dubai, but it shows that it's very low here. So instead, I decided to buy another chlorine tester. Unfortunately, it was the end of my trip and I rushed into purchasing any available professional tester I could find. And I only found a pool tester. Well, you guessed it, it didn't work. So to make things simple, the water's main problem is salinity, which is salts. I mean, duh, we're drinking seawater that is treated to safety standards. Other than that, there are concentrations of chlorine in the water. It only makes sense because chlorine is put as a disinfectant in the water. If you have high temperatures in a country, then you have high risks of bacteria development in the water. So obviously, local authorities need to treat that and avoid bacteria harbor in the water. What do they do? They add more chlorine. Unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to test the chlorine in the water because of the tester that I got. So overall, is this water pure? No, of course not. Nowhere on earth you're going to find pure water coming from your tap. Let's keep in mind that the case is different for each country. For Dubai, we learned that it's not natural water. It's desalinated water. 
This type of water has the tendency to be more corrosive when in contact with metal piping systems. So what you might find is a brownish color of water, which is an indication of iron presence. That is the leach that comes out of corroding pipes. But if we had hard water, aka water with more minerals, the tendency of pipe corrosion would be less. Of course, hard water has its own downsides, but that's a topic for another day. All I can say is that we need to trust our local authorities that they're going to meet the standards and give us safe water. But if you still have a little worry in your head, you can just install a filter that can remove all the remaining contaminants out of your water and live happily ever after. <laughs> now that I think of it, maybe I should do another video covering filtration topics for the house. Either way, if you like what you see, make sure you click that subscribe button. I'll be doing a lot more of these videos. I'm gonna be talking everything about water, sustainability, re resources, filters, so many topics about water. People think that water is niche. Actually, there's so much to talk about. As you can see, now I covered UAE, but there are so many other countries in the world. Maybe you should let me know where I should go next. Okay, bye.